Western civilization, how much do you know? My name is Russell Miles. I had a long career in child protective services, mental health care. More recently, I've been teaching community service students about law, ethics and cultural studies. I have a graduate diploma in economics, a bachelor of arts and a diploma of IT amongst other qualifications. But most importantly, I come from a long line of history buffs, my father, my grandfather and now my sons. I grew up in Melbourne, which is in the southeast corner of Australia. This is about as far as you can get from Europe while still being on the planet. Melbourne looks, feels and behaves like a western city. It has a population of 5 million, was a product of British colonialism, desolation of the Aboriginal peoples, mass migration. One in three people were born in another country. My own family comes from Wales, Scotland, the Netherlands, South Africa and the United States amongst other places. I'd like to dedicate this podcast to my late son, Nick. I miss him. I miss our conversations about people's places and histories. I hope you too will enjoy this conversation about Western civilization. Western civilization applies to the rich traditions of European cultures and histories that have come to dominate global civilization. We're going to look at Western civilization all within 12 short podcasts. I hope to show you some interesting things, confound some of your ideas, and leave you wanting to explore the topic further. The term civilization can be elusive. The Roman orator Cicero wrote of the cultivation of the soul with the highest ideals of human development. Civilization covers a range of facets country or location, languages, laws, military power and war fighting, engineering, design and architecture, thought, philosophy, myths, spirituality and religion, social activity, sports, customs and mores, cuisine, homemaking styles, attitudes to marriage and courtship, raising children, care for the aged and the vulnerable and bereavement. Culture is dynamic and responds to changing circumstances with reactions alongside motions within and flows around. This includes subcultures with their own norms regarding politics, sex, communication, music, with youth culture, linguistic diversity, race, wealth, poverty, disability, faith, education and a host of facets that overlay, reinforce and contradict. Music is an obvious sign of Western influence around the world. U e o multi arakuna, lift your head up high and walk, composed by Haki Arua Nakamura and sung by Kyle Sakamoto, was a wildly popular song in the early 1960s. This enchanting melody sold over 13 million copies worldwide. It is the only Japanese song to have been in the Western pop charts. The lyrics tell the story of a man who looks up so that his tears will not fall on his face as he walks away from a failed student demonstration. It might also be about full-on love or the last hours of a condemned man. The lyricus Roki Yusikai I sought to keep the meaning vague. The English release was made under the name Sukiyaki, a Japanese beef hot pot dish, as it was felt that English speakers would not be able to pronounce the original name. An English rendition of the song had lyrics completely different, more a folk song but rendered in Japanese. The song from the land of the rising sun, hear the winds singing quietly. In the 1980s, the American pop group A Taste of Honey rewrote the lyrics to reflect the original composition, although more a love song performed in a slow ballad-like style. The new lyrics included, It is all because of you, I'm feeling sad and blue, you went away, now my life is just a rainy day. While released as a B-side of a single, Sukiyaki quickly reached number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. Still keep haunting me of a love so true that 
This popular song incorporated jazz infused style from America with Japanese storytelling. Yu Era Multi Arakura shows how Western culture has both spread, incorporated other cultures, become confused, and continued to reinvent itself to become a global culture. The Great Schism refers to a. the fall of Constantinople to the Muslims, b. whether to commemorate Easter on the 14th of the month or the Sunday after, c. final separation of the Roman Catholic from the Eastern Orthodox churches, or d. the dividing of the Empire's governance between Rome and Constantinople. Consider your answer and I'll come back to this in a moment. The Battle of the Ice was fought between the Novigrad states led by Prince Alistair Zanetsky and the Crusader army led by Teutonic Knights in 1242 at Lake Pipus. The battle was pivotal in the Northern Crusades, which were religious wars by Catholic kingdoms of Sweden, Denmark, Germans, Poland, along with military religious orders. This crusade was ostensibly to Christianize pagan peoples around the Baltic Sea at the invocation of Pope Celestine III. It was also to challenge the growing Orthodox states. The circumstances were complex, including cultural influences by Vikings, valuable trade routes to the west and the south, adoption of Orthodox Christianity by the Kiev state, Mongol domination, Swedish excursion, relationships with the Byzantine Empire, and conflicts between Novograd and Rus states. Prince Nevsky adopted a defensive strategy and drew the Crusader knights across the frozen lake. The harsh conditions soon exhausted the outnumbered Crusaders and they withdrew. The battle marked the end of the Crusader campaign and led to the Narva River becoming the dividing line of Eastern Orthodoxy from Catholicism and Western culture. The fall of the Roman Empire took longer than most empires have existed. The Great Schism of 1054 was accumulation of the division of the Roman Empire and the final separation of the Western Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Churches. This reflected economic, military, social as well as religious discord. Religious traditions had become so disjointed with mutual recrimination of heresy, accumulating in the excommunications of each other by the Pope of Rome and the Patriarch of Constantinople. The excommunications were not lifted until 1965, while the issues at dispute, if obscure, are still debated. The division of the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Churches became the dividing line of East from West. Western Europe encompasses the Mediterranean to the Arctic and westward until Eastern Orthodoxy becomes more dominant. Although modern Greece is considered Western, but Eastern Orthodox, Turkey betrays many characteristics of Western culture but has not been accepted into the European Union. The boundary was more obvious during the Cold War from the perspective of the subjugated communist countries. It was anywhere else that was free where you could buy blue jeans, not have to queue for bread and could listen to pop music. France, Finland, USA, Japan, Australia, Latin America. When the Cold War ended, the boundary moved eastward to include the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, but not Belarus, perhaps Bulgaria. The Ukrainians wished they could be included. In 2018, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church ended communion with the Patriarch of Moscow. However, territory is an inadequate as a division of West from East, as we will look at further in these podcasts. Our next podcast will be about art, design and architecture. Further topics will include politics, power and the military, religion and philosophy, technology and science, women, children and sex, law and justice, commerce, communities and sport, globalizations, the origins of Western culture and the interaction between East and West. As a parting question, Michelangelo's painting on the Sistine Chapel depicts A. God's genitals. B. God's posterior, C. Naked angels, or D. Adam's genitals? The answer will be in our next podcast. 
If you like this channel, please subscribe and tick like. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I can be contacted on russmills at iprimus.com.au.